Let's continue with our orange juice producing example. And in this situation, I want to think about what a, what a rational quantity of orange juice might be, or what, what would be a rational quantity of orange juice to produce, given a market price. So let's say that the market price right now, the market price of orange juice is 50 cents a gallon. And I'm going to assume that there are many producers here, so we're going to have to be price takers. Obviously, we want to charge as much as we can per gallon. But if we charge any, if we charge even a penny over 50 cents a gallon, then people are going to buy all of their orange juice from other people. So we, this is the price that we can charge, 50 cents per gallon. So if we think about it in terms of marginal revenue, revenue per incremental gallon, well, that first incremental gallon, we're going to get 50 cents. That next incremental gallon, we're going to get 50 cents for that one. And the next one, we're going to get 50 cents as well. For the first 1,000 gallons, we're going to get 50 cents for each of those gallons. For the first 10,000 gallons, we'll get 50 cents per gallon. So our marginal revenue curve looks something like this. Our marginal revenue is a flat curve right at 50 cents a gallon. So that is our marginal revenue at, at 50 cents at a market price of 50 cents per gallon. Now in this situation, what's a reasonable quantity that we would want to produce? And there's two dynamics here. We want to produce as much as possible, as much as possible, so that we can so that we can spread our fixed costs over those gallons. Spread our fixed cost is one way of thinking about it, fixed costs. Or another way of thinking about it is we have a certain amount of fixed costs. We are spending $1,000 no matter what. So why don't we try to get as much revenue as possible to try to make up for those fixed costs? Or if we think about it in terms of average fixed costs, the more quantity that we produce, the, ad the component of the cost for that from the fixed costs go down and down and down. So we want to have as much as possible to spread our fixed costs. Now, the one thing that we do need to think about is, especially once we kind of get beyond, the, beyond this little dip in the marginal cost curve, and as we're producing more and more units, the marginal cost is going up higher and higher and higher. We don't want to produce so much that the cost of producing that incremental unit, the marginal cost of that incremental unit, is more than the marginal cost of that actual, or the marginal cost of that incremental unit is not higher than the marginal revenue that we're getting on that in incremental unit. So until, until, until marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Or another way of thinking about it, you don't want, you don't want marginal cost, and this is after we go through this little dip here, we're trying to do as much as possible. Marginal cost is going higher and higher and higher. We don't want to produce this much right over here, because here, our, our, that cost for that extra gallon is higher than what we're going to get for that extra gallon. It looks like that cost for that extra gallon might be 53 cents, while we're only going to get 50 cents for that extra gallon. So every extra gallon we produce over here, we're going to be losing money. So you don't want. You don't want marginal cost to be greater than marginal revenue. Marginal revenue. So when you look at the curves like this, it makes sense to just say, well, when does marginal revenue equal marginal cost? And that's this point right over here. And that is the rational amount to produce. So that is 9,000 units. So we're going to be at this line right over here. We're going to produce 9,000 gallons of juice. Our revenue that we're going to get is going to be the area, is going to be the rectangle of the area that's as high as our, that's as high as the price we're getting per unit times the number of units. So this is going to be the total revenue we get if we were to shade this in. And I'm not going to shade it in because it's going to make my whole diagram messy. And what is our total cost? Well, we have our average total cost right here. This is our average total cost are 48 cents. That's this little green triangle right over here. So it's 48 cents per unit <clears throat> times the total number of units. Our costs are the area under the area in this rectangle. So if I were to shade this in, this little slightly smaller rectangle. And so our profits are the difference between the two. Our total revenue is the area under the, I, the rectangle that has this the, the marginal revenue line is its upper bound. And our cost is a rectangle that has our average total cost, this line right over here, as its upper bound. So our profits, our profits in this circumstance are going to be the area right over here. The height is the difference between our marginal cost, which is the same as our marginal revenue and our total cost. So it's going to be the height is going to be these two cents right over here. We're taking the difference between 50 and 48. 
So it's going to be 2 cents. And then the quantity produced is going to be 9,000 units. So 9,000, we're making 2 cents per unit. Our, remember, we're, we're, our average cost, our average total cost is 48 cents per unit. We're selling them at 50 cents per unit. So we're making 2 cents per unit. I wrote 20. We're making 2 cents per unit. 2 cents times 9,000 units times 9,000 units gives us what is that? That's 18,000 cents or $180 of profit. Now, what I want you to think about, and we'll answer this in the next video, is does it make sense? Does it make sense to sell units at all? And if so, how many units should we sell? If, and here's the question, if the market price, if the market price is lower than your average total cost. So does it make sense? And how many units does it make us does it make sense to produce? Let's say if the market price, let's say if the market price were 45 cents, 45 cents per unit. Does it make sense for us to produce?